In November 2017, Lei Jun said in an interview with Indian media that Xiaomi plans to invest $1 billion in 100 startups in India over the next five years to build an app ecosystem around its smartphone brand. In India, Xiaomi and its sister company Shunwei Capital will invest in content, financial technology, deep localization services and manufacturing to drive the spread of mobile internet in India. Six years later, Xiaomi suffered the biggest Waterloo in the Indian market. June 13, according to media reports, India's Enforcement Directorate, ED, issued a document on June 9, saying that it has issued a formal notice to Xiaomi Technologies India Private Limited, Xiaomi India branch, some of its executives, and three banks, including Citi, HSBC, and Deutsche the ED issued a formal notice to Xiaomi Technologies India Private Limited, Xiaomi India branch, some of its executives, and three banks, including Citi, HSBC, and Deutsche, alleging illegal transfer of funds to foreign entities in violation of the country's Foreign Exchange Management Act, FEMA. Among other things, three banks received notices indicating that they allegedly allowed offshore remittances as royalty payments without conducting due diligence and obtaining the necessary documentation. Based on the allegations, Indian authorities have previously seized a total of 55.51 billion rupees of Xiaomi funds or approximately 4.82 billion renminbi, which is allegedly the largest amount seized by Indian authorities to date. This notice may mean that the aforementioned frozen funds will be officially confiscated. The allegations date back to last April. In late April, ED issued an official document stating that it had seized 55,512.7 rupees crore from Xiaomi under Section 37A of the Foreign Exchange Management Act. According to the ED filing, Indian authorities believe that Xiaomi India is merely a trader and distributor of cell phones in India, that these phones manufactured and produced in India do not receive substantial services from foreign entities, and that those large sums of money in the name of royalties were remitted at the direction of Xiaomi's Chinese parent group entities, and that the amounts remitted to two other unrelated US entities were for the ultimate benefit of the Xiaomi group. Entities ED said that paying royalties is just a tool to transfer foreign currency out of India, a view that makes Xiaomi India suspect of money laundering. What is the concept of 4.8 billion renminbi? It is equivalent to six times the total profit of Xiaomi in India for nine years. You know, Xiaomi Group's adjusted net profit for the first quarter of this year is only 3.2 billion. In other words, the first quarter, for nothing. So how is Xiaomi doing in India? In fact, the matter of 4.8 billion seizure money, Xiaomi last year in the local court complaint, but in April this year, by the Southwest India Karnataka High Court rejected the petition. Xiaomi's response to the matter was the same as before. Xiaomi insists on operating legally worldwide and complies with the relevant laws and regulations of the place of operation. And countered that these patent license fees paid by Xiaomi India were for licensed technology and patents on the Indian version of the phone noting that more than 84% of the number seized by the Enforcement Bureau were royalties paid to Qualcomm. The crux of the battle between the two sides is the determination of royalties. The Indian tax authorities believe that Xiaomi remitted the money it earned in India back to China in the name of royalties as a way to avoid paying corporate business taxes. Xiaomi was accused of tax evasion in India back in December 2021, and was fined approximately 600 million renminbi by Indian authorities in January 2022. Frankly speaking, using royalties to avoid taxes is an ambiguous matter, legal in some countries and not in others. Xiaomi is not the first company to do so. Previously, European and American companies would also turn the money they earned in China into royalties and remit them back to their home countries. At that time, China was economically backward and chose to put up with it. Foreign companies made money in China before they were more willing to invest in China and only then did China's economy grow at a high rate for many years. Of course, India is not the China of the year, and Xiaomi is not the same as the European and American companies that came to China to invest at that time. In April 2015, Lei's, Are You OK? speech at the launch of Xiaomi 4i in India was heard all over the internet, making India an important part of Xiaomi's overseas market. Public information shows that in 2014, Xiaomi 3 was first launched in India. Within one month, Xiaomi sold 120,000 phones through online rush. In just one quarter, Xiaomi's share of the Indian smartphone market reached 1.5%. In 2017, Xiaomi became the number one smartphone brand in India. 
Its first factory in India was officially opened in 2018. The factory is located in Sri City Industrial Park in Andhra Pradesh and produces Xiaomi smartphones. According to Xiaomi's official sources, the company has several factories in India, located in Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan. According to public data, in the first quarter of 2022, Xiaomi had ranked first in the Indian market with 23% market share, followed by Samsung, Rearm, Vivo and OPPO. Although this year's market share fell to 16%, the current Xiaomi India is indeed not the same as the wind, but mainly because the Indian cell phone market is the trend of concentration decline. Throughout 2022, Xiaomi shipments fell 26% year-on-year, while Samsung and Vivo among the top five manufacturers fell 5% and 2% respectively, and OPPO grew 8% year-on-year. It should be noted that the big Indian smartphone market contracted by only 6% in 2022. There have been media in this regard at the Xiaomi earnings meeting forward Xiaomi Group President Wang Xiong to ask questions, the other party will be Xiaomi's performance in the Indian market attributed to fierce competition, the general market downturn, Xiaomi failed to circumvent the impact. In any case, Xiaomi's position in the Indian market is still not to be underestimated. The Indian market is also pivotal for Xiaomi, so despite the heavy losses, Xiaomi still hasn't shown any intention of pulling out of the Indian market which has long been known for its harsh regulation of Chinese companies before that. Even last July, Honor CEO Zhao Ming publicly stated that Honor had abandoned the Indian market, for reasons that are well known. There are also many large international companies that have announced their withdrawal from India, including giants such as Amazon, Walmart, and Ford, all of which have folded in India. Even the giants cannot hold up, why Xiaomi is obsessed with India. According to market research firm IDC, Xiaomi's smartphone market share in India will be 28.9%, 28.6%, 26%, 24% and 20% from 2018 to 2022, respectively. Although it has been on a downward trend, it has still been sitting on the throne of India's top cell phone brand for five consecutive years. Obviously, Xiaomi will not easily give up its hard-earned market position. From within Xiaomi, the Indian market is also significant. Xiaomi's overseas market revenue in 2022 will be 137.8 billion yuan, accounting for 49.2% of the group's total revenue, or nearly half, which means that Xiaomi is already very dependent on the performance of its overseas markets. Xiaomi shipped 29.4 million smartphones in the Indian market last year, accounting for about 20% of Xiaomi's global shipments and is an important part of supporting Xiaomi's globalization strategy. On the other hand, India is the second largest smartphone market in the world after China, but until 2022, India's smartphone penetration rate is still only about 50%. Compared to the current penetration rate of over 90% in China and the US, it still has at least an incremental market opportunity of over 40%, equivalent to 560 million incremental smartphones based on India's population estimates. Obviously, against the backdrop of a declining global cell phone market, no cell phone manufacturer is willing to miss out on the potential growth therein. On the other hand, in addition to the most basic cell phone business, Xiaomi has a number of heavy assets in India, as well as investments. Public information shows that by 2021, Xiaomi has set up three manufacturing plants in India in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh in partnership with Foxconn and Flextronics. Flex! In May this year, Xiaomi also announced that it will partner with local Indian electronics manufacturer Optimus Electronics to produce neck-mounted Bluetooth headset products. Dixon Technologies, a local Indian manufacturing company, also announced that it will enhance the Indian component ecosystem with Xiaomi through a wholly owned subsidiary to manufacture and export smartphone products for Xiaomi India. By 2022, approximately 75% of Xiaomi's cell phone components can be made locally in India and 100% of TVs can be made locally in India. These are the heavy assets of Xiaomi in India, once the exit is, pull out the carrot and bring out the mud. Not only the direct economic losses are heavy, its incidental employees, supply chain aftercare issues are also quite ponderous. After Ford announced its exit from the Indian market in 2021, its subsequent 4,000 employee severance, supply chain compensation issues took nearly a year and a half to complete, and ultimately cost $1.8 billion. By comparison, Xiaomi's 5.4 billion renminbi even seems a bit worth it. Lei Jun's idea is to create an app ecosystem around the Xiaomi brand. The success of Xiaomi Eco Chain and Mijia Eco in the Chinese market proves the feasibility of this model.
and if it can be successfully replicated in the Indian market, the revenue it generates may also be comparable to that of the Chinese market, which is obviously very tempting for Xiaomi. Once you choose to exit the Indian market, these assets, investments, layout will all be lost. Xiaomi is afraid of losing more than the 5.4 billion yuan on the books now. On the other hand, India is being recognized internationally for its ease of doing business. And according to the World Bank's Doing Business 2020 report, India was ranked 130th in the world for doing business in 2015, out of a total of 189 economies. By 2020, India's global doing business ranking has improved to 63rd. Perhaps Chinese companies like Xiaomi can also look forward to a more level market environment. In recent years, many Chinese companies have encountered unconvincing problems at sea. Typically, OPPO and Vivo suspended their sales in the German market due to patent lawsuits with Nokia. Xiaomi escaped Nokia's patent lawsuit in Europe because it had reached a patent agreement with Nokia several years ago. Talking about here, we have to mention, is India friendly to foreign investors? How are foreign brands that have developed well in India being treated? In fact, Xiaomi's encounter in the Indian market is not an isolated case. Previously, including OPPO, Vivo and many other Chinese companies have received several warnings and penalties. In July 2022, OPPO was accused of evading tariffs, which amounted to about 3.8 billion renminbi. In the same month, 119 Indian-related bank accounts of Vivo were blocked by the Indian Enforcement Agency, IEA, for a total of 400 million renminbi. In a related statement, the Indian Enforcement Directorate alleged that Vivo India had remitted approximately 45.5 billion renminbi to China and other places to avoid paying taxes. Of course, India is not only fining Chinese companies, but also European, American, Japanese, and Korean companies. Also in 2022, the Indian government took Apple to court for monopolizing cell phone stores by charging a 30% commission, and demanded that Apple pay a fine of 1.1 billion renminbi. Cook was outspoken, only 5% of people in India use iPhones, so how do we monopolize the market? Google didn't have time to rejoice, but it was also taken to court by the Indian government, with exactly the same problem as Apple. Android has a 95% market share in India, and Google has voluntarily admitted to a fine of $1.1 billion. And Amazon, the acquisition of several local companies in India, the size of the rapid growth to the first, earn a lot. The Indian government immediately took it to court for selling only goods made in China, saying that it hindered free competition. Amazon was fined 200 million. Samsung was fined 1.5 billion, and Nokia was fined 1.7 billion. According to statistics, India has made billions of dollars a year by fining foreign brands. At this point, back or not back. It is not a simple matter of emotion, but requires comprehensive consideration, what do you think the answer will be? I can only say here as a consumer, from the bottom of my heart, the world is so big, I hope foreign companies and the government can cooperate well, to benefit consumers and achieve a win-win situation. Welcome to leave a message and share with us, we will see you next time.